Hello YouTube. Today on The Naughty Librarian, I am going over my May TBR list. Also, I'm having a day where I just kind of want to eat marshmallows right out of the bag. Like, have you had days like that? Because I have, and today's one of them. <laughs> you may also be thinking, hey Amanda, aren't you a vegetarian? How are you eating marshmallows? Those aren't vegetarian. I'll tell you. Vegan marshmallows, everybody. Did you know they exist? Because they do and they're delicious and I'm just having a ball. <laughs> That all being said, I have some really, really cool books on deck for May. I specifically made this TBR list a little smaller than usual because I want room to go rogue because, well, April, <laughs> I just completely abandoned my TBR list, but we'll get into that later. Right now, this is what I have on deck. It's like a good mix of things that I'm really excited about. Let's get into this. Let's go. This is what's on deck for May. Let's start things off with a delightful historical romance rom-com, which is Waiting for a Scot Like You by Eva Lee. This series has been really fun. Um, it's, it's the Union of the Rake series, and all of them are kind of based around themes or story ideas from 80s rom-coms. Already you should be fascinated because it's great. <laughs> this one in particular is based around Ferris Bueller's Day Off. So if you ever wondered like, hey, what if Ferris Bueller and his best friend Cameron got together? <laughs> Odd couple situation. This is kind of exploring that. So you have Lady Ferris. She is kind of a wild woman. She's a, a dowager countess. She's a widow and she's like, I'm living my life. I'm doing crazy, whatever. I'm doing it alike. And then you have a very high strung Major Duncan McCameron and he is from Scotland and he is just like oh no I don't do this I am a, I have I have I have rules <laughs> and I follow them and then they're on a road trip from hell together and she's just kind of crazy and he's very much like narrow and opposites attract and Already, if you said, hey, did you hear about this historical rom-com? Yeah, it's based on Ferris Bueller's Day Off. I would already want the book, say no more. But this one, I've been really enjoying the series so far, so I'm super into it and I'm really excited. Also on deck is Second First Impressions by Sally Thorne. Another fun rom-com. However, now we're going contemporary. This is the third book by Sally Thorne. Love Sally Thorne books. Uh, this one kind of takes place at a retirement community. There's this woman, Ruthie, she works there and like that's her whole life. She doesn't really have a lot of time for personal stuff. And then you have Teddy, he shows up, he's a playboy. He makes a bad first impression and she's like, oh, well, I'm gonna show him some things. <laughs> so she tried to just make his life hell. However, it doesn't go well because Teddy gives great grandson and all these like retirement community people kind of like Teddy. She's like, what? And then, you know, opposites attract, they're gonna fall in love apparently. And also there's like these turtles that are like really rare turtles they take care of. So there's turtles and sassy old ladies and rom-com delights. So I'm so into this, I, I just wanna read it right now. Next up, I have the book of the month for the Blades and Bodice Rippers book club, which is Shadow and Claw by Jean Wolfe. This live show is going to be the last Saturday of the month over on Liana's channel. It's going to be really fun, 11 a.m. Pacific time. Come join us. It's going to be a good time. We're going to chit chat. And this one is, I don't know, it's kind of like a sci-fi fantasy, grim dark fantasy mashup. And I'm really hoping I like it. So technically this book is really like two novellas mashed up into one book. And so there's two books in it, um, Shadow of the Torturer and then Claw of the Conciliator. So, um, I mean, Torturer is one of the names of the books, so it's gonna be dark. You have this guy Severin, he's a torturer, and then, uh-oh, he does the one thing torturers are never supposed to do, shows mercy. So he, everyone's like, get the fuck out of here, Severin. You are no longer welcome. So he's like, oh shit. And he has to go on the run. And so he just is like, well, you know what? I'm on my own. I'm gonna go on some quests and do some stuff. And uh, I, I don't know. I feel like it's very Glockta from the first Lost trilogy. And I like Glockta a lot. So like, I'm into this. I wanna see where this goes. It, it was written, I think, like in the 80s, which does give me a bit of pause. Yeah, this was uh, written in 1980. So we'll see, but it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be a fun discussion. I'm excited to read it with my friends, so come join us. 
Also on deck, I have Lost in the Neverwoods by Aidan Thomas. Oh, I'm like dying to read this. Uh, this one is kind of a dark, modern day Peter Pan retelling, and I'm obsessed with it right now. So we're following Wendy. Wendy has a kid. She goes into the forest with her brothers. She Something happens. She doesn't really have a memory of it. She comes out of the woods. Her brothers don't. Uh-oh. Time has gone by. Now it's modern day. Kids start going missing again in the woods. And like Wendy is like, oh no, I'm not dealing with this again. She tries to take off. She gets in her car. Uh-oh, she's driving down the street. There's an unconscious body in the road. She almost hit with her car. She's like, oh shit. She gets out of the car. And wouldn't you know, it's Peter. And she's like, oh, I thought you were imaginary. And he's like, no, but like shit's going down. We gotta go in the woods, Wendy. And she's like, oh no. So she goes in the woods with Peter Pan. And like, I love it. Why? Peter Pan, obviously. Also, creepy woods, fantasy staple. Like, woods are always creepy, and I'm into this so hard. I'm so excited to read this, guys. Like, oh, I'm so excited. Also on deck, I have Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen. I decided I'm going to do another episode of Drunk Classics on this one, so stay tuned. There will be an episode where I get very drunk and read Sense and Sensibility, so you don't have to. I don't necessarily know much about what this is about, besides it's Jane Austen, it's Regency era. There's going to be rom-com elements. People are hunting for a husband, probably. And then, you know, zany antics. I don't really have any idea what this is about. Um, there's no blurb on it because it's like a pretty special edition. It's been out for a while. But yes, Drunk, Drunk Classics is continuing and I'm kind of on like this big Jane Austen kick right now. So I figured, hey, let's keep the momentum going. Gonna do Sense and Sensibility. Also on deck, I have The Lost Apothecary by Sarah Penner. I got this book kind of randomly. I hadn't heard about it, but it was part of Book of the Month. So I was like, okay, let's try this out. And it has such a cool concept. So this is kind of about um, like apothecaries back in the day, especially female apothecaries. They would make all these things that were cosmetics but really they were husband poison <laughs> it was like a thing like you can look it up like so many cases of this and like I'm always so fascinated by those stories and this one is kind of about that so it takes place in like old timey times with this like husband poison apothecary and then in modern times and these two stories are gonna like intersect and I mean really just tell me it, it, female apothecary making husband killing cosmetics and like I was already in and this one has like kind of like a mystery element of it and I'm like I'm really excited about it this it's like a me book it's like a subject matter that I always get really excited about which maybe says more about me than it should <laughs> but um, I'm still excited to read this one it, it's fun also on deck, I have Legend Born by Tracy Dion. I keep hearing like fantastic things about this book constantly. So I finally got myself a copy. I'm gonna read this. I am excited about it. So this one is kind of a King Arthur, Arthurian legend retelling, but modern day. Uh, essentially, there is like a secret society that is like the descendants of Arthur and his knights and they they fight monsters and demons and stuff like that's kind of the basic gist of what i know about it already great concept love it it's ya and it's fantasy and it's arthurian legends love love all of that and also i keep hearing fantastic reviews so i'm very intrigued by this at the moment so i definitely want to dive in and just like see what it's all about Back on deck for May, I have The Memory of Souls by Jen Lyons. This was on my April TBR. I didn't read it. I went completely rogue, but I want to read it. <laughs> so it's back on deck for May. Hopefully it'll happen this month. So I've been making my way through this series. I believe the last book of the series does come out this month. So that's also a deciding factor for me to get my button gear and read book three so I can move on to book four. And this one is kind of still continuing uh, Kieran's story and his friends. This is a incredibly built fantasy world. Like if you were a world building nerd, you were going to love this series. Like in the back of the book, they have an appendix and a glossary. There's like, there's an encyclopedia in the back of the book. There's a lot of building happening here. But anyway, Kieran and his friends, they're like trying to save the world because demons are on the loose and just doing demon stuff and it's bad. And they're like, we can't have this. We got to fight these demons. So they're going all over the world in this 
fantasy world <laughs> trying to stop the demons basic gist of the idea of the series but yes I am loving it so far it's more of a heroic fantasy rather than a grimdark fantasy and sometimes I just want to like the characters I'm reading about you know what I mean so I'm into this I'm going to read it I, I just lost my way in April I went completely rogue and of course, I have Rule of Wolves by Leigh Bardugo. Oh boy, I'm so excited to read this. This is the conclusion to the Nikolai duology, and this is part of the Grishaverse. It's like the third series in the Grishaverse. A lot of stuff happened in King of Scars, the first book, and I won't get into it because, you know, spoilers, but like, oh boy, Nikolai, he's, he's in a pickle. <laughs> Like there's this big war brewing with Fierda and uh oh can't have that happen. Ravka is not doing great financially in other ways as well. And then, you know, there's characters you totally thought were dead, like were super dead, aren't dead anymore. And you're like, oh my gosh, bombshell, la la la. All of that kind of hit a fever pitch at the end of King of Scars and I've been like waiting to see how that's gonna shake out because some shit went down and I need to know what happens. So yes, this is happening. I am so excited to read it. Like, uh, I'm so excited. Okay, so that's everything that's on deck for May. Uh, you know, I, I usually put more books on my TBR, but I decided not to because I want Wiggle Room to go rogue because April has taught me a lesson that I'm just a chaos person and I need to go rogue sometimes. Let me know in the comments down below. Um... I don't know, what do you have on, on deck for May? Like, what are you really excited about to be reading in May? Also, have you had these marshmallows before? Because they're freaking great. Not sponsored. I just order them off the internet and I'm obsessed with them. So, I don't know, vegan marshmallows? What, what are your thoughts? Comments down below. If you like this video, make sure you give it a like. And if you want to see more videos, make sure you subscribe. And I'll see you guys soon. Bye! -bye.